could have played what tennis, golf, football. Why did you choose football? Eh, uh, good question. I think if you saw my second shot, my tee shot, I think I've chosen the right sport. Uh, so you know, it was a tough one. It was a tough one. I actually probably prefer golf uh, when I was a boy uh, to football, and just it's as simple as. I was going to university and I thought if I, if I played golf first, I could never go back to football. If I played, if I went football, I could always go back to golf. And that's, honestly, that's the simple reason for it. I'm just very fortunate that it worked out. But you were very good at tennis as well. Did that just get in the road of football and golf? Well, so I got in the road. I had to give that up early doors. <laughs> uh, so I couldn't play that. Uh, golf was a summer sport. Uh, football was a winter sport. Sounds stupid, doesn't it? But We're on this PGA Centenary course at Glen Eagles. Have you played this before? What would you... What would you go round this in a, <laughs> on, a, on a good day? Oh, on a good day. Because I know you've been off, what, plus three? Plus three, yeah. So, uh, this new handicap system's a little bit dodgy at the moment, yeah. so I need to get myself a bit closer to scratch. So, no, listen, I've played it quite a lot. I, I live down the road, so yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic place to come play golf. Think What's it? your best round, round here? here? Five under. Five under? Five under, I But, eh. Uh, that's Ryder Cup material. What's that? That's Ryder Cup material. <laughs> that was in the summer. After a, cu after a cup double, then you wake up to the news that, you know, it was five under round here. Must have been, what a summer it's been, what a season. And then even... Yeah, I know, I, I think the... I, I was actually done blame for I got, it was, it was the course record, but... Yeah, I probably enjoyed that more. No, I don't know, I only joke, I'm all <laughs> uh, It was something I've worked, worked towards, but no. It's, uh, yeah, listen, golf's a great sport. I think every, every can all play it. You know, you can all play against each other. Callum, I remember playing against you when you were at St Johnston. I was at Hibs on loan, uh, Easter Road. You beat us 1 0, actually, but I uh, remember seeing how talented you were. And now that you're a manager, you must recognise some of your players are just as talented. You went to England. What, what do you feel about uh, players like, uh, you know, McCart and, and Rooney and McCann? getting an opportunity to go to, not necessarily a bigger club, but bigger league, richer league. How um, how do you advise them on that type of move? It's a real difficult one. I think it's, it has to be sort of uh, twofold. It has to be sort of balanced for the club. But what I'd say, I'd never stop anybody going to play at a higher level. I never want to really put the brakes on that. I think you, you look at what they've achieved, you know, much more than what I ever achieved, you know, as a player uh, for St Johnson. So, you know, all credit to them. You know, Alan McCann's just a young man. I think he's 20. You know, he's played against Italy. Uh, his performance levels in the final after having COVID for 10 days and, and not training is remarkable. Actually, Newell stepped past him in the, in the first half and I thought, oh, he's not quite as normal as Ali is. And he, he, after the game, he, he kind of came over to me and went, Gaffer, how can you breathe after 30 minutes? I was knackered, you know, but I think as you watched the game, he got stronger. So to answer your question, I would, I would try and I'd never stop him, but I think it has to be right for, for St Johnson as well as as the player. I think it would also show Callum that uh, St Johnson provide a pathway, come and play for me, come and play in Perth, come and play in the Scottish Premiership and if you do well, you know, you, you'll get the opportunity to go to a, a bigger league. I think Sean Rooney's probably a prime example of that, I think. Yeah. Uh, obviously signed from Inverness and first half of the season we had Danny McNamara from Millwall, uh, who I keep texting saying thanks for leaving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for Gary for calling him back. Uh, but yeah. I think with, with Sean, I think he's he obviously played it quite a few clubs in his career, you know, and I think he's found a place where, you know, he can play football and he can express himself. And he's, he was phenomenal uh, for the second half of the season. And, and again, there's, there's interest in him. So it just shows you that there is a pathway and uh, hopefully that can, we can attract younger players who are hungry. I think with the way the season ended, you probably look back and say it was frustrating when you were, because you were playing well. Yeah. But how important was it that you didn't change the way you were around the training ground towards the players and just keep believing in the method? Yeah, I think the biggest thing he said there was performance levels were really good. We were dominating teams, had loads of chances, and we just couldn't score. I kept coming off having the same... I think we got beat 1-0 about four times in a row. Yeah, I remember that. I'm thinking, what did I actually say to I players? thought I'd just in my radio and repeat every <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it me on the an interview? <laughs> yeah, and I just kept saying the same things. I was thinking, I was scratching my head. I was a little bit, going to be honest with you, I was a wee bit concerned. I thought, my first job, you know, I haven't really seen St Johnson's team dominate so many games and, and not come up with results. And, you know, it was one of those. I, I phoned a couple of managers, or good mates of mine, and one said change it, one said keep the same. So I was stuck again, so it didn't really help. And uh, I just thought that what we play in the system suited the players the best. Uh, I had a little tweak in both boxes. I showed them a few stats of when we conceded goals, uh, which were really poor 40, 45, and 80 to 90. Uh, and that wasn't due to fitness levels. Uh, it was just due to concentration levels for me. And uh, I think if you look at the stats after that, it was, that was basically, for me, one of the biggest reasons we... We entered a, a really good six months. 
Is that a big thing for, for you? I know it is for a lot of clubs, looking at stats, looking at data, looking at uh, analysis. And I, I, I like it, and yeah. I don't use it all the time. I, I like to I like to have a look and, and figure out things, any trends, any patterns going on. Yeah. Uh, can you see anything? Uh, if I'm looking at data, you know, if I had Chris in the team, you know, he's probably running data, it wouldn't be too high, but he would score goals. Yeah. You know, so th I'm not really one of these guys that go, oh, he doesn't run, so he's not in the team. Uh, how, how can he affect the game is probably my best way. How does he affect the team performance? Uh, and that's my biggest thing, you know. Uh, you don't need to run, but could well, you, you, you do need to run, actually, I tell you either. <laughs> could, you, could you give Boydie a bit of a lift to try and improve his golf game? Well, well I'll have a look at the swing as we go along and we'll... And we'll see what's, from we'll see what's Good man. <laughs> You've got a game coming up, we could be here all day trying to fix this. <laughs> He's that tight, he can't lose his golf on. <laughs> He's that tight. <laughs> He's that tight. He does it. He does a tease. <laughs> look at Beautiful. That's all right. Down the middle. Beautiful. Well done. European football, what a great experience it's going to be for you and your players, eh? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, guaranteed uh, four games. I think, you know, I think we'll look at the, the teams we could get. I think the draw's coming up. So I think the teams we possibly could get are, are fantastic ties, you know, and a great experience. Uh, really tough games. Uh, we're obviously in sort of, with the Scottish Cup, we've got to the latter stages of the, the qualifiers. So, you know, try, and really, try really hard to win one of those ties. And, and be the sort of first St Johnson team to get into uh, the league football. What a season it was for you, for you last season. Yeah, listen, it was, it was one of those you probably dream of, you know, I think St Johnson. Uh, obviously one trophy, 2014 major trophy, and then to win two in the space of three months, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, so, no, definitely enjoyed it. I think the lads enjoyed it, especially uh, after. It was good for them because, again, all professional players last year had to live really, really strictly and, and live by rules and because they were getting scrutinised and so, you know, all credit to my players for that. I watched the tennis, I watched Wimbledon. I know you're a big uh, tennis fan, but I listened to Federer, who said, you know, when uh, he was playing in front of, of no one, it was like losing 70, 80% of the enjoyment when he was winning uh, tournaments. I mean, nothing will ever uh, diminish your, uh, your achievement, but my God, it would have been so much better with... A large group of St Johnson fans. Definitely, I'm actually pioneering for no fans at Hamden. You know, <laughs> that's us going there four times in one every game. So seriously, <laughs> do you think that? Do, do you think? Do you think that helps some players having no one there? And I think I think it definitely does. It, it some players, you obviously like. I know myself, and probably the same as us. I, I need the fans there to to keep me going and stuff. But uh, you know, the, the players played at high level, high days. My players were out of crowd. You know, I remember. Uh, the semi-final with uh, Hibs and the Bet Fred, and I was standing out there on my own at Hampton going, this is like eerily quiet, this is so strange you know, to be a semi-final. Uh, yeah, let's hope we can get them back in and, and through the doors. And uh, do you know what? You play football to entertain and you play football to for your, your home support and to try and entertain and be successful for them. So they're the real reason you play football. It's a family club, St Johnson, for everybody to be there. You know, when you look back, that must have been something that, not annoyed because it's, you know, it's, uncircum it's unfortunate circumstances, yeah. but at the same time, it would have been lovely yeah, I think to have so. there. I think 2014 is the bit I remember most was about the whole occasion, the whole final, the build-up, the aftermath was getting the bus tour and you, you, you turned into the high street in Perth and it was just like sea of blue and white and it's like, you know, it was incredible. It's quite it's emotional when you see it and the support and the joy in people's faces. So for me, that was probably the biggest thing we, d we weren't able to do, you know. Uh, I take it you wouldn't be shy parading the trophies Listen, once you get the fans in. <laughs> Let's hope we can do it and, and hopefully hopefully we can do something for the people of Perth. And yeah. Even a little, little open sort of bus tour, you know, I think something. Yeah. Are you going to win the double again? You know, uh, uh, probably. Well, you made it look easy last season. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not. So I think it's one thing you've definitely got to try and celebrate uh, properly, but obviously try and do it at the right time. Well, you spoke about celebrating it. Is the head recovered from sliding into doors? It's actually my ribs when I landed. <laughs> 95 kilograms landed on the floor. How do you think the floor sleeps? <laughs> <laughs> Although I've got to say, it was one time my daughter actually was quite impressed with me. Because she had 1.3 million views on Twitter, so... Whatever that, whatever that means. Brilliant. Whatever that means. See, see, we, we speak about the fans, but see even like, you know, you, you mentioned your family there. The hard graft you have to put in, it's 24 7 as a manager, but even not being, you know, your family and everything at the games as well, how disappointing are Yeah, I was also disappointing. I remember when the, the Betfred and I basically got my car from Hamden, drove home, and had a glass of champagne with my wife at home after winning the, winning the major trophies. So that was, 
That would sound disappointing because most of are yeah, yeah. But no, it was, it was great fun, you know, but I think that's put, put into some uh, perspective of where we were at the time. So it was quite difficult uh, doing that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll have had enough glasses of champagne since then. So, <laughs> see, right. one other thing, I'm just going to see. We speak about you know players moving on and stuff. I mean, I know you're you're ambitious. You you know you want to follow your own career. I know St Johnson's been brought for but you know is that something you look to continue this to you know maybe get back to England or get a bigger move? No disrespect to to St Johnson. I think as a as a as a same as a player, I think we all say you want to be play at the highest level. You want to manage at the highest level. I'm no different. I'm pretty ambitious. I'm pretty driven, determined to try and win games of football. And wherever that can take me, you know, uh, we'll just wait and see. But at the moment, you know, really enjoying my time here. You know, hopefully get the supporters through the door uh, pretty soon and maybe we can start enjoying some football. Strike. Oh, good angle. Strike. Tell you what, I tell you what. It's got a chance that's been smoked. Perfecto. <laughs> it's got a chance. <laughs> it's got a Callum, chance. you know what it's like. Everyone's got an opinion on football. How do you react to, I don't know, Boydy gives your team a bit of criticism or anyone else, how do you? I phone him up and give him a one bastion. No, I'm joking. Uh, no, I think it's, uh, it's part and parcel of the job. I think you have, you've got to realise it. Sometimes it's it's difficult to take when you, you believe what you're doing is right or you made the right decision. I think for me, hindsight's a wonderful thing and as a manager, sometimes you'll make decisions and you'll look at it and think, maybe could have done that different because it didn't work out, you know, so... It's, it's, it's easy to comment on, on something after the game's finished. You know, in the heat of the moment, all, all for me, my staff always do is try and prepare and plan for what's going to come up and, and have a sort of logical decision of what you, how you're going to make that decision. See, just see when you talk about, like, like after the game when you're going in, maybe it's the results not went the, the, the way you want it. I take it you're not a rant and raver, you'd rather speak to the boys and then deal with it, say, Monday or Tuesday when everything's calm. Yeah, I'm probably not running away. I've done it a couple of times. Uh, I, do you know, I think there's, there's a right time for it, but nowadays I believe that young players don't really respond that well to the rant and raving. I think, for me, you don't play next week. Simple as that. If you don't play well, uh, you know, I will have a wee pop at them at times. I uh, will have pop at them in training. Uh, I think they have to know exactly where, where the role are, the role, what the role is and what the demands of them are. Do, does anyone have a pop at you, your chairman? I mean, relationships are sometimes strained with uh, chairman at football clubs. Have you got a good one? Yeah, I've got a good one. Uh, hopefully he'll give me a few more players and it'll be even better. So uh, I think the relationship's good. I think players, I still want players to ask questions uh, and basically challenge. I think that's what I sort of want from the club. I want people to challenge you. I want people to challenge in the right way. You know, uh, have a go at the teammates and stuff like that. I like arguments. You know, as long as they're resolved in a professional manner. As long as it doesn't become personal or it doesn't become, you know, in football, but sometimes it comes you know, obviously can't use the phrases, but it becomes a little bit personal. I think it's as long as it's professional, it's done the right way. Uh, I do like that sort of competitive kind of argumentative side to, to, to the game. You, you mentioned players there. What is the likelihood of you getting players in? I know that there's a bit of speculation with some of your players going out, but I'm yeah, sure work, you've yeah. got your eye on a, a yeah, couple of players. Yeah, yet. working hard, you know, I think there's two or three there. I think every player that played in the, the cup final of you know, the Bet Fred in the Scottish Cup, we're all born in Scotland, yeah. you know, which is quite a... A, a sort of unusual probably circumstance to have so I, I try and base it. So that it. happened by accident not design? It was accident but I think I look at the players and I think I, who knows the league what I don't have is really any gambles right. you know I probably had one last year with Guy Mellon but that was my only real gamble uh, I'm not really in the position where I can take a chance on two or three players so that's probably why at the moment we haven't re-signed really anybody we've signed obviously a couple of younger defenders but uh, more on the attacking side, I need to make sure it's the right one uh, and make sure when they come in, the, the, they hit the, the ground running. You sound to me as if you like a project, you like, you know, maybe youngsters coming in, develop them. You see it as, yes, you know, it's, you win two trophies, but listening to you, I think you'd be just as happy if you can develop players and sell them on and bring money in for the football club. That, you know, shows how good a job you've done on the pitch. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy it. I think you're right, Chris. I actually want, I'm just desperate to win. But the same token, you know, we need to help players. I think that's my job. It's it's helping players get better. And I think I'm not one of man, a manager. If he's 18, if he's good enough, I'll play him. You know, uh, it's not one of those. I'm not sure about his age. If he's good enough and he listens, he does the right things, then he's definitely an opportunity to play and, and probably get more reward from that uh, than anything else. You know, let's be realistic. Where do you see in terms of St Johnston going forward? I think it's a really difficult one. I think uh, for me, the challenge is, is, is keeping the players I've got 
uh, developing players, as we talk about, I think cup competitions are, are going to be vital again. Uh, we've got obviously got the competition in Europe. Uh, can we be the, the first sort of St Johnson team to get to league stages uh, of European competition? So there's, there's things there, definitely there to drive us forward. You know, supporters back through the door. So yeah, it's going to be really tough. First and foremost, obviously stay in the league. You know, I say it every season. I said it when I see work with Tommy. Obviously, we stay in the league first and foremost, uh, and then we'll look forward. Callum, come on, stay in the league. You're a top six club. Yeah, listen, it's one of those, but that's why we've we basically we're in the position. I think because we don't we don't sort of aim too high. We look at every game. We we make sure we try and win every game we can. You know, and I know you're supposed to say that maybe it says a little bit defeat. It's just not. It's just being realistic. You know, and then if you can get the cup competitions Europe added on onto that, then it becomes a, a great season. Well, I think we've seen it before as well. When you go back to Partick Thistle, you know, even Mother won't come on that. You know, you finish higher up the table, and then the next season you're struggling. So, I mean, I think it is somewhere where you say, you know, you've got to reset and go again. But see, I know if St Johnson have to qualify for the for the you know, the group stages of Europa, the Conference, and in, in Europe. How difficult will that be with this, the small squad you've got until at least Christmas anyway? Yeah, I think it'll be a challenge. I think it'll be a big challenge itself. Uh, I think if it qualifies, I think I've got two days before the transfer window shuts, so I think I'll be on my phone trying to sign a few more players <laughs> if we qualify. So that's just, realistic. That's just being realistic. You know, so yeah, it will be a challenge. That'll be probably the toughest thing. You know, we've got to make sure our league form is really good uh, as well as obviously trying to progress as far as we can in, in the cup competition. So. Yeah, it'll be a challenge, it'll be something new, uh, something exciting, something I think the players myself are really looking forward to. You know, we want to have a real go at it and, and see what we can do. Just to finish, uh, Callum, I know that Covid hit us all uh, last season, uh, some clubs uh, more than others, but are you still as uh, wary of uh, you know what might happen? Because we've already seen some games being postponed. Yeah, extremely. I think it's probably going to get worse uh, for, for teams uh, in the next couple of months. I think obviously younger generation are obviously picking it up, so I think for us to try and have players not self-isolate, etc., it's going to be very tough. Uh, and I think it's something we need to look at and how can we help the football teams, you know, because we, we can't just carry loads and loads of players because yeah. money situation is not there. So we need to do try and figure something out where we can limit the isolation period or limit the, well, with everybody being safe, you know, and, and make sure we can do something where we can help the teams uh, perform. How difficult has that been as a manager? like? You know, it's difficult enough in terms of management and stuff like that, but having to manage the COVID situation and, you know, as you say, this, like, so there's no groups of people having to self-isolate, is that another challenge? It's I think last season for me, that was probably the most stressful time I've had in my life. You know, the last three weeks of the season uh, with basically eight, nine players out with COVID, you know, and, and try to balance it. It's not a decision you're making in football, it's a decision in life. So for me, it was that was probably the most stressful time I've ever had. Playing Celtic had 10 senior pros. Got to get an emergency goal in on loan. You know, it's the first time I've ever been delighted with a 4-0 defeat. <laughs> so, you know, it's, that, that is a challenge. That's a huge challenge. And uh, just fortunate enough we were high enough up in the league that it didn't really affect us. No, give me. Jeez. I would have gave you it, mate. But Thanks very much. Well done. Pleasure. Thank you very well much. Done. Enjoyed well that. Great game. Well done. Well done. Cheers, Andy. Well Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, guys. I'm still undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>